What's going on everyone? I'm Jaren and today we are talking about Mean Girls, the 2024 adaptation musical remake. It's the same setup and plot as it was before as we follow Katie Heron, who is a hit with the plastics, an A-list girl click at her new high school, but everything changes when she starts falling for Aaron Samuels, the ex-boyfriend of Alpha Plastic, Regina George. To set the record straight, there is no other rendition that could compare and hold a candle to the original 2004 film. Mark Waters' Mean Girls has effectively meant a lot to many people of this generation, whether how much it's been talked about, how much times it's been referenced, or the way it's been celebrated after 20 years. Whether that adds to the original source material, Queen Bees and Wannabes by Rosalind Wiseman, or the sensational screenplay by Tina Fey, in which many fans have been so inspired by that they had to produce a Broadway play, hence the reason for this movie's existence. I mean, a stage play is one thing, but another movie? Is it even necessary? That's what I said when the first teaser dropped, and I was curious about checking this movie out. I just felt like it was too soon to gentrify another high school classic. And not being well versed with the stage play, they did not showcase any of the songs at all in the trailers or in any of the other promos and advertisements, but I felt like that was a bad sign. I felt like it was going to be unbearable, and I avoided checking out any of the track lists before going into this movie. I wanted to go into it as blind as I could, and I'm glad that I did. This was an absolute surprise. I did not expect to like this movie as much as I did. This is the same movie, beat for beat, they just broke out into song and dance. The nuances were a hit or miss when it came to landing some of the iconic one-liners, just the inflection was delivered a lot better in the original, or the reiteration was just unnecessary. Some of the song numbers really added some layers to the supporting characters that we already know and adore. Speaking of supporting cast members and what the music has done for them, B.B. Wood as Gretchen Wieners was a talent. Now, I know she wasn't really given a fully fleshed out number, but she was ridiculously pretty. She had more of my attention than the rest of the other plastics, and I thought her acting chops were impressive. Now, there's a lot that could be said about her facial expressions, her reactions to her vulnerability, to her insecurities, especially as the second in command of the Queen Bee. And I think that Wood has a presence, a Broadway presence to her, that I would love to see her in more movies. Ali Cravalho as Janice definitely stole the spotlight for me, and it's not just because her performance was like a full bar higher than the rest of the cast members, but it's because her song numbers were my absolute favorite of the entire track list. It's almost as if Moana were covering Olivia Rodrigo music. Now, they did make a change to her backstory, her origin to the burn book, and I thought it was rather clever and embracing. I also enjoyed her rapport with uh, J. Kel Spivy, his version of Damien, and just the way that their humor, their attitude, and just the way that they bounce off one another in a duet. With the only knowledge I have of her performances being in the Nice Guys and the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, and Gallery Rice was a complete surprise for me seeing what she brought to the table as Katie Heron. Now, there is a sense of intuition that is missing as of the narrative when it came to Katie, but I really did buy into her story of how she was the outsider that transformed into the flavor of the week at her new high school. Now, there are some contrivances that I'm kind of mixed on when it came to the rivalry between her and Regina, but I was not expecting some kind of shot-for-shot -shot remake. I just wish that they gave those contrivances a lot more conviction. Last but not least, it was difficult for me to picture anybody else filling in the shoes of the original Queen Bee, Rachel McAdams. Now on the other hand, Renee Rapp, she does a fine ass job as Regina George with the sex appeal, the edge, and the confidence. I mean, she really embraced the opportunity to chew out the scenery when it came to her musical numbers. But when it came to landing some of the more iconic lines, it just didn't work for me. Uh, I understand that the actress, the artist, she has done the stage play before, but seeing it on film, I was very critical. And I understand the artist herself, she has a lot of talent, she has a lot of potential, I just wish that they gave her a lot more in the script to work with, other than the lyrics and the costume choices. 
Jenna Fisher as Katie's mom and Busy Phillips as Regina's mom was merely perfect casting. I mean, both pairs actually look like they could be related. And they also got Tim Meadows to recycle his lines as Mr. Duvall here. And with the talents of John Hamm, Megan Thee Stallion, and even Ashley Park, who played Gretchen Wieners in the original stage play of the Mean Girls musical, I felt like they could have utilized them just a little bit more than just cameos. Heck, I mean, we could have gotten Christopher Briney, who plays Aaron Samuels. They could have given him his own song and dance number, and it could have freshened things up just a little bit more, given his character a little more layers. As a musical, I really admired the efforts and the budget that they put into this movie, whether that would be with the cinematography, the choreography, the set pieces, the transitions, and even the lighting. And I think that the directors have an eye for horror in their future if they wanted to do that. Because if you see the way that Regina George's music numbers were executed, there were some dark and just horror adjacent effects. And with Tina Fey's penning the script for the second time, I really appreciate the nod and wink to the audience that we got by scraping at the fourth wall and acknowledging the fact that it is, in fact, a musical and a remake. Overall, I can completely understand how a lot of diehard fans can be easily divided by this. I mean, the only way that you can check out this movie unbiased is if you've never seen the original movie at all. And I wish that the tone and the narrative of this movie was a lot more meaner. I, I'm i glad that I walked into this movie with an open mind and walked out thinking, huh, they really made a Mean Girls movie for the theater kids. <laughs> it's bold, it's fantastical, it's refreshing, and it's totally fetch. All right, guys, that's all I got to say about that movie. Go ahead and check it out. I think it's still playing in theaters. Just do me a favor. If you're still planning on going to check it out, don't try to refresh your memory by rewatching the 2004 film right before you're about to go see the new one. It's, it's a terrible decision. Otherwise, if you're planning on skipping it, it is not your fault. You're not missing out a lot. I mean, if I didn't have a channel, I wouldn't have seen it at all, but I'm, I'm glad I did. But thank you guys again for taking your time out of your day to listen to me talk about some movies. I'm Jen Agbanawag. Look forward to more reviews, and I will see you guys at the movies. Take care.